Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Gus Reyes, we had the honor and the pleasure of having Dr. Gus Reyes on the show today. Thank you. The director of the Texas Christian Life Commission. Perfect. Is that right? Well done. And uh, we have also the double pleasure of having Dr. Andrea Ramirez, the executive director for the Faith and Education Coalition, and Letty Cancino, the worship leader and team training expert, I call her expert, uh, she's also my wife, uh, joining us today. So thank you both for being on the show today. Definitely. As our theme is um, from preschool to graduation, how to prepare students uh, to graduate, mm -hmm. and from the perspective of a graduate and um, also a mom, mm -hmm. from both moms, mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to have a, a dialogue about what that means. And so thank you, Dr. Gus, for yeah. helping me through that dialogue today um, to begin with. Right. I have a question. Both of you have degrees. Yes. So as you think back about your parents and the kinds of things that they did to help you see that goal and achieve that goal, what would you say, each of you, as a standout, one or two things that you said really made a difference? Because there's a lot of parents listening, and maybe we can give them some ideas of, of what works. I mean, both of you have degrees already, and so uh, maybe you can share with us. Can we go first? Sure. Well, I think what was really important for me is my mom really painted a picture for me of how fun college was. Mm. When I was really young, I, all, I, of course, preschoolers, all they care about is fun. So she, was, she would say things like, oh, I can't wait for you to go to college, and you're going to have so much fun in college, and you're going to make great relationships and great friends in college. And she just really painted a picture of when I get to college. I mean, high school is fun, but college is going to mm -hmm. be great. You're going to have exciting growth. I think just keeping that in our conversations when we were I, I homeschooled, so keeping that in our conversations daily or, or weekly, um, it was just a part of, of growing up, and that's, it, that was what I was going to do. It wasn't, right. um, there wasn't a question about stopping after good. high school, good. at high school. So lots of encouragement from mom. Uh -huh. Very good. How about you, Dr. Ramirez? I think, uh, as I think back, my parents took a picture of me in regalia when I was a preschooler and then had that picture in our house, in our living room. And it was so helpful to me to see that vision cast and to, to walk by. And I, I never felt pressure that, that I needed to get a doctorate necessarily because they... Um, helped to, to shape my perspective to remind me that it really was about loving the Lord with all my mind mm -hmm. and that the Lord had a plan for my life and he was going to show me what that was and I needed to be asking him. Well, and if I could um, pursue getting a doctorate, then they were going to help get me to that point and, and right. encourage me. But I think accountability, I would say, second, would be when I turned 18, they, they said, um, i never forget, there's nothing in the Bible that says when you turn 18 that you're done. And so we have um, a, a role in your life to help encourage you, and, um, and God's going to help us to know when we need to take, take a step back from you, but we're going to prepare you for adulthood. And so they held me accountable all through college from the types of um, the way I was spending my time and, and the types of grades that I was, that I was uh, producing. That's great. And so a follow-up question, uh, it's okay, Brother Danny, Absolutely. is um, now you have, both of you have preschoolers. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there are working moms out there who are very involved in ministry, are very involved in work. What, what can you do, what can we say to them about how to help prepare, prepare preschoolers to get ready for college? What, what, what are you doing now, and what can we say to them? Um, well, I think uh, it's really important to have a consistent... It doesn't have to be a lot, but something consistent, a time that you set aside in the day to learn. Oh, good. That you really teach, we're going to learn right now, whether it's 30 minutes a day or whether it's like a, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, an hour or more, whatever that is. I know nobody's perfect and everyone's busy, but any like... Um, any intention, any efforts towards that is really important. And um, the second to make learning fun. Okay. Like it's got to be about, um, you know, this is what life's about. We love the Lord. We sleep. We eat. We exercise. We learn. Like right. it's about life. Like this is, it's included. Yeah. Um, but it's got to be fun. Right. Totally got to be fun because they register. Um, I mean, that's what their life is. Yeah. They just want to, they want to do fun and they got to equate learning with, with fun. 
Right. So, so there's a season. Scripture talks about a season mm -hmm. for different things in our lives. You're just helping your preschooler learn. You know, there's a time to eat. There's mm -hmm. a time to sleep. Mm -hmm. Tummy time. Mm -hmm. But there's also time to learn. And intentional that's focus, learning. And it's intentional. Right. Right. And I really picked up that idea of learning is fun. Mm -hmm. So if it's not fun now, mm -hmm. it's never going to be fun. So yeah. this is a good time to, mm -hmm. to help place that idea in their hearts and minds. That's great, lady. I think okay. one way to do that is to say, this is what I learned, to be transparent mm -hmm. with your own child, to say, this is what I'm learning as your mom, and to help them to know that the learning doesn't stop mm -hmm. once you become a mom. And mm -hmm. so I've even had my uh, almost five-year-old say, um, oh, so... As mommies, do you, you learn things? And I say, yeah, as a mom, you learn all your life, and God will be teaching you things, and it's your job to figure out what that is and, and placing that into their own language. And I think even asking questions, like, oh, I didn't understand what that what that word meant. Yeah. Yeah. What, what does that mean? If they see mom learning, mm -hmm. and if they see mom asking, that it's okay to ask questions, that you don't understand that word, mm -hmm. then they're going to feel more comfortable doing and that. And I think it's okay to be transparent that you love learning. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, they pick up all kinds of unsaid preferences, your unsaid, you know, thoughts. They mm -hmm. just pick it up because there's, mm -hmm. that's what they're doing. They're growing so much right now. And I think if you don't love learning, if you hate learning, if you see it as a chore, mm -hmm. they're going to tend to see it as a chore. Mm -hmm. So um, not that that's, you know, it's never going to change. You know, if you have a preschooler and you want to teach them to love it, mm -hmm. learn to love it yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really exciting to, to be able to help your preschooler realize that mama's still learning mm -hmm. and that mama yes. likes to learn. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anytime mama's learning from school books or from God's Word or, mm -hmm. or being in a learning environment, that, you know, they're watching anyway, so might as well let them see you learn. That's a great word. We're inviting them into that time. Yeah, let they them get excited that they're... Good. Yeah. Maybe they can... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think also, too, it's important that, one, lifelong learning. Yeah. You're modeling lifelong learning. Right. And two, it's never too early right. to learn. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm pretty passionate about this one because I think that sometimes there's a misconception that babies or toddlers are too young and they're going to work later on, so we don't want to we don't want to put too much on them. But there is an early learning time from birth to five years old that each of us as parents can really invest yeah. a strong amount of time to to get a, a love of learning to uh, instill that in our children. And so we, I, I read to my eight month old, you know, and show mm -hmm. her and show her the words, and she may not understand everything, but she. She understands that I'm excited about that time that we're spending together. So when she does understand the words, or it, it grows. Well, good stuff. That's awesome. Listen, we have about a minute left. Uh, so much content, and I wish we had more time. But can you give parents and students some advice on maybe um, how to avoid some of the, ch the pitfalls that, that are out there? Uh, just when it comes to looking for information, when it comes to, to learning um, and maybe from a mom's perspective, mm -hmm. I got a toddler. Where can I go to find some of this information? It's good. Well, honestly, I pick up so many things from Pinterest. <laughs> like, Pinterest is not just fun yeah. for me, yeah. but there's so many things from education.com, Teachers Pay Teachers, um, so many just free printables that you mm -hmm. can use. Um, there's not too many principles for tots, but exposing them to everything as much as you can now is always, always plus. And you can learn from other moms. I think that's the yeah. great thing about Pinterest is that moms put their own ideas mm -hmm. out there and then you can learn. That's um, great. So that's a good, I think Facebook uh, often, I'll throw out a question to a few mom friends, create a, a mom group and ask them, hey guys, how are you teaching mm -hmm. to focus mm -hmm. on Christ with Christmas or to um, focus on Valentine's Day about God's love towards us and connecting us to love others as our neighbors. So just things um, like that, connecting with other moms. Thank you very much. Danny, what's Absolutely. next? Absolutely. We have a video with some additional information about Education Sunday and what's going across the country.